This question appeared in NEET PG 2023 and it describes a 10 year old boy admitted with features of severe dehydration, nausea and vomiting. When you did a urine sugar, it was 3 plus and a random blood sugar was 550 milligram per deciliter. If you did an ABG, it was 7.1 the pH and the bicarbonate level is 7 millimole per liter. And what is the line of management as per ISPAD guideline? And your options are giving a fluid of 10 milligram per kg uh, body weight and insulin of 0.1 unit per kg body weight. Another option is 10 milliliter of per kg body weight of IV fluid and after one hour starting insulin at a uh, rate of 0.1 unit per kg per hour of insulin. The third option is 20 ml per kg of IV fluid and an insulin of 0.1 unit per kg per hour. And the last option is 20 ml per kg of IV fluid and after one hour insulin of 0.1 unit per kg per hour of insulin. Now, this is a very, very important question, both in your clinical settings as well as for examination. So let's start and have a look at the management of diabetic ketoacidosis. Now, before we manage diabetic ketoacidosis, let's try to classify uh, the DKA patients into mild, moderate and severe. So let's look at the classification. So we can have mild, moderate and severe. And how do we classify them based on two parameters? One is the pH and the second is the beta hydroxybutyrate level because we know that these are the ketone bodies which are formed in the DKA patients. So based on the pH, if the pH is less than 7, it is classified as severe. If the pH ranges between 7 to 7.25, it is classified as moderate. If the pH ranges point between 7.25 to 7.25, 3.5 it is classified as mild. Let's look at what will be the classification based on beta hydroxybutyrate. If the beta hydroxybutyrate is less than 4 it is classified as a mild. Between 4 to 8 it is classified as moderate and if the beta hydroxybutyrate level is more than 8 it is classified as severe. So once we have classified it then we will look at what are the components you know uh, of uh, various components of DK patient management. So we know that we have to manage the dehydration component we have to manage the high blood glucose component we have to manage the electrolytes in these patients because there will be some very you know uh, critical changes in electrolyte happening as you manage this patient then you will also have to take care of the acidosis of this patient okay and lastly, because in this case also you saw the patient, the patient was in clear acidosis and the last and the last is, you know, supportive measures. So we'll talk about some of the important supportive measures. Okay. So let's start by looking at the dehydration component. So what is the fluid of choice? Fluid of choice in this patients is normal saline, isotonic normal saline. What should never be given? So remember, Ringer lactate should never be given in these patients. Why? Because Ringer lactate is rich in potassium and when these patients come, they already have very high potassium levels. Is it clear? Now, as you keep correcting the dehydrations, the sodium level in these patients will become higher. Okay. So you have to monitor the sodium levels and at certain point, you may have to substitute this normal saline by n by 2 okay is it clear so you have to continuously monitor the sodium level you know maybe every 6 hourly or you know 12 hourly and if the sodium levels starts increasing you will shift from normal saline to n by 2 similarly you will keep measuring the potassium levels of these patients because initially the potassium will be high but as you keep correcting the high blood glucose sugar and if you when you start giving the insulin what is going to happen all this potassium will shift inside the cell and there can be a fall in the potassium levels and then you may have to supplement potassium also so this is very very component so how do we generally we do it so generally when we talk about adult around five liters of replacement fluid replacement is required which we do gradually so the first hour we do it at one liter per hour for first two hours 
and then we correct it at around 400 ml per hour okay so this is the normal correction we try to correct 5 liters over next 24 hours for children for children the guideline says 10 ml per kg body weight per hour is it clear for children this is the guideline 10 ml per kg body weight per hour this is the correction of the dehydration is everybody clear about it and again for children we start with normal saline and after one hour we generally shift by n n by 2 because if we correct by normal saline then the potassium uh, sodium level may keep increasing so this is all about the dehydration component let's look at the high blood glucose then. now remember before we can uh, you know control the high blood glucose we should always first manage the dehydration component only you know one hour after the correction of the dehydration do we start the correction of the high blood glucose level that is one point the second point you have to remember is that we do not rapidly correct the high blood glucose levels why because if we rapidly correct what is going to happen there is going to be cerebral edema and what will happen because of and there can be some irreversible brain damage okay so this is very very important we correct the blood sugar level gradually and for that we give 0.1 mg per kg body weight as bolus and for maintenance also 0.1 sorry not uh, 0.1 unit per kg body weight as maintenance and what kind of insulin we use we use regular insulin okay short acting regular insulin what should be our target sugar level so target sugar sugar level should be between 200 to 250 milligram per deciliter this should be our target blood sugar level so if blood sugar level is falling below this you may have to give 5% dextrose also you don't want to correct uh, blood sugar level rapidly in this patient this is very very critical information let's look at the electrolyte as I have told you that you know when you start treating the patient when the patient first comes to you his potassium level may be high but as you manage his decay his potassium level may fall and it may fall very low so you have to look have a look at his potassium levels and supplement if required and similarly when you start the patient his sodium level uh, may be low but as you keep correcting it it will keep increasing so at some point of time you will have to shift from normal saline to n by two for management of this patient based on the Put, uh, you know sodium levels so this is about electrolyte let's look at the acidosis component now as you keep treating the dk most of the acidosis will correct by itself you have to treat the acidosis only if the ph is less than 7 if the ph is less than 7 which means only in the severe category you are going to correct the acidosis if it is more than 7 generally as you keep treating this patient the acidosis component will keep correcting itself and for treat management of acidosis you use soda bicarb soda bicarb okay so this is very very important information acidosis generally you do not treat till the time the ph is below 7 7 because as you keep treating the patient the, pa the patient acidosis will improve how about supporting measures we know that dk is precipitated by you know some triggering factors like some infection so infection control becomes a very very you know or any other triggering factors which you have to look for they become very important you know in management of diabetic ketoacidosis because until unless you manage the trigger which actually initiated the dk uh, episode then you will not be able to manage the patient so this is all about it there are three things which i will tell you and which should you should always remember number one remember this that we do not you know uh, we first manage the dehydration component first we replace the fluid and only only then we manage the high blood glucose level this is a very important concept second important concept is we do not rapidly correct the blood glucose we correct it slowly over next 24 48 hours and we try to maintain a you know target blood glucose level of 200 to 250 milligram per cent okay because if we do not do if we rapidly correct it there will be cerebral edema and this can lead to potentially irreversible brain damage and last important thing is acidosis we generally do not manage until less the ph is less than 7 management of acidosis only when the ph is less and one bonus point have a you know very very strict vigilance on the sodium and potassium levels and supplement 
uh, or change to n by 2 accordingly. So this is about dk. Now let us look at the question. So clearly this is the correct answer because we will like to give 10 ml per kg for the uh, IV of uh, and only after 1 hour we will give 0.1 unit per kg per hour of insulin as a bolus and then as a maintenance also. So this was the correct answer is B. DK is a super important topic again for your exam point of view and uh, you know hope you learned about it and if you are seeing this video on YouTube just hit the subscribe button hit the bell notification because I am going to create a series of these MCQ videos which will be super helpful from exam point of view for NEET PG for INICT on a daily basis.